Greetings, I'm John Spirit, a Planetary Logistics 2 may or may not take over my life, and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. We have two fluid projects today, centralize fluids further into this fluid applied energistics system, and create rocket fuel. We currently have oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen flowing into our terminal. I want some more oxygen, so I'm going to set up a method to create more oxygen, but I want to start supplying fluids not using a one holy fluid bus, but using the A2 system instead. As an example of this, let's take a look at the fluids that need to be supplied to my epoxy resin system. We need chlorine, phenol, sulfuric acid, hydrogen, and carbon monoxide. All of these fluids are flowing in from all across our base. This area also uses polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride. What if we were to split this area from the rest of the bus by putting a fluid interface that has all the required fluids next to this system, and just pump out of that fluid interface? I'm highly considering making 64ME fluid interfaces now. For a cheat to not have to do the two autoclavings of Certus Quartz Dust, just turn the Certus Quartz Dust into Certus Quartz Seeds, grow them in a crystal growth chamber, and then form them into Certus Quartz Blocks before you um, reform them into Certus Quartz Crystals. Very fast. This is pretty unbearably slow, but once we get an energetic infuser, which requires some stuff that we can get eventually, we'll be able to automate this and make it much faster. To speed up these processes, I'm going to make acceleration cards. Five advanced cards, five acceleration cards, which I plan to make many more of, but for now will be used to create printed logic circuits way faster, because wow, are these slow right now. Almost everything, just waiting on the MV machine holes I have cooking up in here. I'm very thankful I'm making like 64 of them right now, because I have just so much aluminium in my system. As I will be level emitting polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, and sulfuric acid, I'm going to put them all into one 1 cami fluid storage. I'm also going to name these fluid storage cells now, because I'm having trouble figuring out what they are without pressing the, the shift and control button to see the MBT. I can do that with an anvil. To get the experience, I can eat DML matter. Behold, a name. 64 fluid interfaces, here we go. Here's 64 ME fluid level emitters as well. Our first endeavor will involve chlorine and hydrochloric acid. We'll put a machine controller on this advanced chemical reactor. Excuse me, I've just decided that's a horrible idea, and that I should now make a crowbar in order to remove it and put it on the side instead. Right-click on a cover with a crowbar to remove it. We'll put it on the side instead, and hook up redstone conduits. The redstone conduits will connect down blue to this level emitter, to which a fluid interface will also be attached. It will supply chlorine and hydrogen. Until I fully merged into a Planet Logistics 2, purple and cyan will be the channels for my fluid conduits that extract and insert from fluid interfaces. This chemical reactor will insert on cyan, and this chemical reactor will extract on purple. I've just connected the system over there and the system over here up using energy ME conduits, and if I remove a hydrogen bucket, it should get refilled automatically. Perfect! I'm going to add hydrochloric acid to this drive. Fluid level emitters are in millibuckets. When there are 64 buckets in the system, start outputting a redstone signal. We're extracting always active on purple, hopefully it should go into this fluid interface. As soon as I press the insert button, it should start flooding in, it should hopefully get sent into the network, and then, when it fills up to 64 buckets, I'm hoping that this is going to turn on. It's done! I'm making a water cell. Apparently that broke my anvil. Poor anvil, is there a better anvil we can get? Apparently with dark steel. You can get the Endervoir to automatically export fluids in the direction you want by right-clicking on the outline, and it should start filling our fluid interface with water. I'm actually going to have an Endervoir here that's specifically exporting into this fluid interface. As this is technically causing constant fluid re-renders, somebody please tell me if this is a bad idea, because then I'll change it to be filling a drum with water, and then connecting that drum to the, to the network using a fluid storage bus. Incidentally, I'm also going to throw water into this fluid trash can for now. Eventually, I'll replace this with a system involving putting a storage bus in an aqueous accumulator. But, now that all the relevant fluids are going into their proper places, with the exception of this, which I'll just set to extract on purple, I believe, I can remove this fluid conduit right here. This system is now separated from the general fluid network. Now before we go too deep into the AE revampment rabbit hole, and I decide not to put any rocket fuel in this episode, I am going to start putting rocket fuel in this episode. Rocket fuel is required to run certain micro miners. To make rocket fuel, there are multiple methods. The most efficient method is to make it from dinitrogen tetroxide and 1,1 dimethylhydrazine. 
There are a lot of silly ways to make dyed nitrogen tetroxide. I think the most efficient that uses the least amount of random materials is to um, use a chemical reactor from nitrogen dioxide, which you can just get from one nitrogen and two oxygen, which is objectively cheaper than, say, using 7,000 oxygen for one dyed nitrogen tetroxide. I don't even know why this re recipe is here. Dimethylhydrazine has one and only one recipe, chloramine and dimethylamine. I have the hypochlorous acid for the chloramine. To get methanol, I'm probably going to use the method involving carbon monoxide and hydrogen, because I already have a carbon monoxide producer and I'm always making carbon dioxide from my oil product. This method is just as efficient in terms of resources, but it, rather than use oxygen that I'm using for other things, I'm just going to use this carbon dioxide I already have. And I'm not going to use the carbon dioxide for this methanol recipe because it requires two more hydrogen buckets. I'm just going to make ammonia straight from nitrogen and hydrogen. In total, I believe I'll need six chemical reactors and one mixer. Because I want the carbon monoxide from the system, I actually am hooking up these fluids first. Right now I've got sulfuric acid done, I have a level emitter for sulfuric acid, and I'm going to shove it into this fluid interface, and I'm going to extract it always active right now so it starts filling up the system. I'm currently extracting the polyethylene into the system, and now the PVC. For some reason, oxygen is not getting pulled out of the centrifuge by this fluid pipe. I am told it may be because I'm not using a fluid filter. Once I added a filter, it started extracting for some reason. Once I broke and replaced the pipe, it started extracting. I now know I think what went on. I used to be using a fluid extractor in this pipe, but then I removed it and it still acted like it could only pull out nitrogen, which is pretty weird, but that's okay. I'm just going to extract it and replace it. By unhooking this electrolyzer from the system, I am now using carbon dioxide, or not using carbon dioxide more accurately, and so this is filling up, but I'll fix it eventually. Alright, it is less messy, but it is no longer the one holy bus, so hopefully that continues to help reduce lag and centralize AE even more. And another system has been unceremoniously disconnected from the holy bus. I'm going to start adjusting it now. Guess who's adding yet another type to his fluid drive for hypochlorous acid? The special kind of lag from Greg Tech Machines that we call backstuffing lag only occurs when the output is completely full. This is not true for most of the machines on this line. So I'm not going to worry about it. There won't be any lag from endless recipe lookups for those machines. I also will not be shoving epoxy resin into my Plyo Ninja 6.2 system because the last thing I need it for is fiber reinforced epoxy resin sheets, and I can get and I should be able to fit all of the recipe things for that on this last line. Rather than supply hypochlorous acid to the interfaces and then pull it out using interfaces, I'm actually going to prioritize the extraction of hypochlorous acid into this advanced chemical reactor, and then of slightly less priority, we'll be inserting hypochlorous acid into the fluid interfaces. Actually, since this machine is back stuff, I think I'd rather turn it off using a level emitter. So, uh, time for another fluid interface, I guess. Luckily, I have so many of them. A resident conduit on blue is going to be turning off this chemical reactor. This chemical reactor is accepting acetone and phenol. Although phenol will come from the interfaces, acetone is going to come from somewhere along this line. I'm going to still set it to insert on cyan, but I've set the acetone up here to extract on cyan. I think that'll keep the system still intact without shoving a bunch of random acetone into the system and breaking things. This is not going to be so easy for these two chemical reactors because they they output water and salt water, respectively, besides the materials that I want to shove into the epoxy resin. So what I'm going to do is blacklist epichlorohydrin and bisphenol A being input into these fluid interfaces and only allow one fluid interface to experience input. You can set a blacklist by pressing the whitelist button and turning it into a blacklist. I'll do it with salt water, uh, eventually. Rather than auto-outputting carbon monoxide, I'm going to do the same thing with the hypochlorous acid that I did with the carbon monoxide. I'm partitioning a fluid storage cell to carbon monoxide and salt water. Carbon monoxide is going into my system. The level emitter is on. This chemical reactor now has its working disabled, so I can put back in the carbon dioxide. And now, with the exception of sufficient chlorine, I have everything in the system that I need to create rocket fuel. I'll set up my rocket fuel system, I don't know, on this line. This chemical reactor will accept nitrogen and oxygen on integrated circuit 1 to make nitrogen dioxide. On configuration 2, nitrogen dioxide will make dinitrogen tetroxide. Nitrogen dioxide can be used for a couple other things, but I'm not going to put it in the system right now, just auto-output it into this upper chemical reactor. The bottom chemical reactor here will be my methanol reactor, accepting hydrogen and carbon monoxide on integrated circuit configuration 0. This reactor will be my ammonia reactor, accepting nitrogen and hydrogen with integrated circuit 1. The ammonia and the methanol will make the dimethylamine, so I have the methanol auto-outputting to the top. Incidentally, the ammonia will also output to the top, and hypochlorous acid will be input into the chemical reactor from the top as well, so that we can create chloramine. Both of these create water. 
I miscalculated the number of chemical reactors. I need one more for dimethylhydrazine. The dimethylamine reactor will auto-output to the top. The chloramine reactor will output as such. I'll do the auto-output for dimethylamine, even though dimethylamine produces water, because we have space for one extra input, and even if you put the wrong sorts of inputs into the chemical reactor, they'll still make the right chemical. More accurately, they'll make whatever chemical they can. Chloramine is only useful to make dimethylhydrazine, and dimethylamine is only useful to make dimethylhydrazine, so even if there's water alongside, they will only produce dimethylhydrazine. Because of this fact, I can extract directly from the chloramine reactor as well. In order to extract excess water, though, I'm going to put fluid filters on the chloramine and the dimethylamine reactors. Done, and done. One thing I just realized, my air collector isn't working because it's not exposed to any blocks. I'm just going to disconnect the carbon dioxide electrolyzer for a little bit, and then it should start working. Oh, it's still blocked, but once I remove these fluid conduits, it'll not be blocked and it'll start filling up with air. Very good. My dinitrogen tetroxide chemical reactor will auto-output up, and my dimethylhydrazine reactor will extract into this mixer. Note, this also produces diluted hydrochloric acid. I will shortly create a distillery to this. Actually, I already have distilleries over here. The distillery will distill it on integrated circuit configuration 1, and I'll extract on purple. The Discord tells me I probably only need about a thousand buckets of rocket fuel, at least stockpiled. So I'll partition the carbon monoxide and salt water on rocket fuel as well. When the system has a thousand buckets of rocket fuel, it will input a redstone signal everywhere. Except for the distillery for hydrochloric acid. This fluid interface is now full of everything. We'll proceed to set this to extract always active and see what happens. Okay, it's happening pretty slowly. But the nitrogen is filling in and it's making nitrogen dioxide and surely it'll make nitrogen tetroxide. Boom, nitrogen tetroxide. I don't know how air entered this. We've now got ammonia going into this chemical reactor. It looks like this fluid conduit is too quick on the bit for this chemical reactor to be able to output any of the ammonia into this chemical reactor above. So I've started round robining by setting a brown insert on this fluid conduit and a brown insert on this one so that it round robins between them. When this chemical reactor outputted water into this chemical reactor, dimethylamine and chloramine were not allowed into it. So scratch my advice about just auto-outputting into the chemical reactor. However, I fixed this by removing the water and allowing the dimethylamine to enter. And once the dimethylamine entered, no water was able to enter, but the chloramine did enter. In moments, we will get our dimethylhydrazine, and it's going to go in here, and we're making our very first rocket fuel. How exciting! And our diluted hydrochloric acid is turning into hydrochloric acid. And the whole world is amazing, and yay, it's all working, I'm so happy. The one thing we're missing is sufficient chlorine, but I can just shove more salt ore into my system, and I'll make tons and tons of it. One thing you may notice is that this is not a very fast system at all. One person suggested implicitly that this be an HV system, so eventually I can switch this to HV simply by replacing all the machines with HV machines. But rocket fuel is done! We will be able to throw out microminers into the void! But before we do that, we're going to make an ore processing system that should be able to handle all the ores coming out of my microminers. But we're not going to do that today. I will be doing a couple things between episodes, like putting phenol into the system and feeding tin, uh, molten tin into the system as well for the circuits over here, but that's fine. But for now, that's it for today's episode, a lag-reducing episode, and that's it for the holy bus. It's eventually going to be destroyed bit by bit by sad, sad bit. But my day of reckoning will come, and it has an acronym, LP. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.